are we just monkeys with shoes on, as a lot of people say? I tend to think that that is more accurate than not. And if you have read The Third Chimpanzee by Jared Diamond, which I highly recommend if you haven't, he talks about the fact that human beings or homo sapiens are only 3% different than chimpanzees in terms of our DNA. And gorillas are actually 8% different than chimpanzees in terms of DNA. So human beings are more genetically similar to chimpanzees than gorillas are to chimpanzees. And so if you kind of lump these primates into a group separate from us, like, oh, there's monkeys and gorillas and apes and chimpanzees, and they're kind of in their own category, and then human beings are kind of in our, our own category by ourselves, that's just not true, at least in terms of our genetic material. And so it's really interesting to think about that and to realize that we're actually more similar to chimpanzees than these big gorillas are to chimpanzees. I think that's pretty interesting. And there's a new study that shows that we actually might even be more similar to chimpanzees than our DNA shows by itself. And what they're saying basically in this study is that when human beings speak, no matter what language they're speaking, we tend to move our mouths between two to seven times per second. And what this study found by some researchers in the UK at a university there is that when chimpanzees are grooming each other and they're smacking their lips, which they think they probably do to prolong the social interactions, they actually move their mouths at about four hertz. And so they move their mouths in the same range as we move our mouths for human speech. And so they're thinking that that might be an indication that the, the tools that we use to produce language might have existed in a common ancestor that we share with chimpanzees and that the mouth movements of chimpanzees when they're smacking their lips is not that different from when human beings make speech. And so I want to read some of this article to you from Science Alert about this study. And so this article says that the way chimpanzees smack their lips together has a similar rhythm to human speech and a new study suggests this could be a clue to where our ancestors got their neck for language. And they go on to say that no matter what language we're speaking, humans around the world are known to open their mouths two to seven times per second while talking, which equals two to seven hertz, with each open and close cycle of our mouths corresponding to verbalizing a syllable. And while the universal rhythms of human speech or fast cycles of mouth opening and closing have also been found in orangutans and macaques, this is the first time that such a rhythm has been identified in African apes or chimpanzees. And so comparing recordings from four chimp populations, both wild and captive, researchers have now found that chimpanzees also produce lip smacks at an average speech-like rhythm of four hertz, which is right in that two to seven hertz zone that we use to produce language. Now this article also says, of course, that we don't know what that actually can tell us about our evolutionary history but it might help us to connect primate vocals and human speech on the evolutionary timeline. It kind of goes against this idea that language just spontaneously emerged out of nowhere. And it seems like there are precursors for human language in other species, especially ones that are closely related to us. And that makes sense. So they talk about the study published last year, for instance, that found that when 2,137 chimpanzee gestures were categorized into groups, and their duration was averaged out, they obeyed some of the same basic mathematical principles as human speech. And the authors of the new study, led by researchers from the University of St. Andrews in the United Kingdom, concluded that their findings support the hypothesis that speech recruited ancient primate rhythmic signals. However, this possibility remains tentative until new, more detailed data become available, of course. And while the lip smacking of macaques and gibbons is suspected to be an innate skill, the vocals of orangutans are possibly learned. We don't know a lot about this still. And that could very well be the case with chimpanzees too, they say, who typically produce the sounds when grooming each other, like I said before, potentially as a way to initiate and prolong their social interactions. And here's another really interesting thing from this article. They quote the researchers as saying, in our own analyses, there seemed to be variation in the frequency with which individual chimpanzees produced lip smacks, with some never 
or only rarely observed to produce lip smacks despite similar observation hours as their group members. So it looks like even in chimpanzee groups, they have people who are kind of chatty Cathy's. I said people, maybe that's more correct than not, but they have some chimpanzees that are more like chatty Cathy's and some that are more reserved and quiet. And who knows why that is, but it seems like in human beings, we obviously have a variation in how much people talk. People like me, for example, are talking a lot, and there are other people who are more quiet. And I think it's interesting that chimpanzees show similar patterns in their social groups. And then they go on to say that comparing video recordings of zoo chimps in Edinburgh, UK, and Leipzig, Germany, to wild chimps in Uganda, the team found a level of variation in the frequency of their lip smacking that they say has never been reported before, sometimes up to two hertz between populations. So it's not like chimpanzees always talk at the exact same frequency, just like human beings. We have a range of two to seven hertz, it said earlier in this article, and it appears that there's some variation in the way that chimpanzees produce these lip smack noises as well. In great apes, however, the fastest mouth rhythms tend to keep a steady rhythm around a single hertz, so the authors think the variability of lip smacking frequencies in chimp populations may imply social factors instead of hardwired signals. So maybe it has something to do with the social status of that individual chimpanzee within the group. So maybe it has to do with chimpanzee social status or some other social factor, and it's not just some kind of hardwired thing where they produce an exact frequency all the time. And then they go on to say that between captive and wild populations, the authors of this study found no systematic difference in mouth signals, probably because of a substantial overlap in the range of rhythms present among individuals in different groups. So it appears like there's not that much difference between chimpanzees in the wild and chimpanzees in a zoo setting, at least according to this one study. And then they conclude the article by talking about how the researchers would like to have more research into this area because it might tell us something about how human language evolved. And I think that's very interesting. And I think this is particularly compelling because I think that human beings tend to kind of try to separate ourselves from nature. So we say like, ooh, this is natural, 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 natural. It's kind of all over our marketing. Like this is a natural thing. This is a synthetic thing or like human made. Well, I don't believe in the separation between human beings and the natural world. I think that we are firmly part of the natural world and everything that humans create, even if it's synthetic, is part of the natural world because natural things, human beings, animals created it. So if a beaver chops down some trees and makes a dam and changes the course of a river, that's considered natural by people and an animal did it and it changed the environment. So why is it that when a human being creates something in a lab, it's considered synthetic? I just don't believe in that. I think that we are part of nature, and studies like this show us that we're really, at the end of the day, not that different from all the other animals out there. And yeah, we've sent one of our own to the moon, and we have a large prefrontal cortex, and we can do some cool things, but really, at the end of the day, we're closer to being monkeys with shoes on than not, in my opinion. And that's it for today, and I'll see you in the next video.